Mindset is the combination of attitudes that a person has developed as it relates to experiences they have had or have not had in their lives. With that being said, sometimes it is necessary for us to simply stop, put a pin in it, do a reevaluation, take a personal assessment, do a reality check, do a mental health wellness check to make sure that we have not fallen over into what I call a defeatist mindset that needs to be, guess what, ditched. When we talk about ditched, that means that something needs to be, guess what? It needs to be thrown away. Something that needs ditching, it needs to be gotten rid of because it's no longer serving a purpose. It's no longer useful. It's no longer beneficial. It's not serving us well. When we ditch something, it means that we willingly give up something at one value level because we believe that we can get something greater at a higher value letter level. So we're willing to make the exchange. A defeatist person, however, doesn't necessarily see it as being that simple. A person who has a defeatist mindset is of the notion that this is the way it's always been. So this is the way I expect it to continue to be. This is what happened the last three times. So I'm expecting for it to happen this well, this way as well. After all, why shouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? This has been my experience. This has been the outcome. And I am smack dab in the middle of being rigid, being of the mindset that this is just as good as it gets. Well, you know what? A person who expects or is excessively ready to accept failure needs to ditch that defeatist mindset. The reason they need to ditch it is because if they're ever going to rise up above whatever got them feeling trapped, overwhelmed, challenged, whatever obstacles that they might see in front of them, they've got to get assistance somehow or some way, and they've got to get a personal want to on the inside of them that says, you know what? There's got to be another way. There's got to be another door. There's got to be a fresh opportunity, even if I create it for myself. We want to talk about ditching a defeatist mindset. The number one key is to resist. We have to resist it. What is it? It's the challenge, the obstacle, the roadblock. It's the headache. It's the hindrance. It's the frustration. It's the irritation. It's the overwhelming tiredness and exhaustion of contending sometimes. Guess what? We've got to disallow it. When we see that the defeatist mindset is trying to rise up and trying to overtake us, cloud our thinking, keep us from seeing from the proper lenses, we've got to resist it. We have got to resist the words, the negative words that were spoken to us, that were spoken over us. We have got to resist lies that were told to us maybe even told on us. We have got to make up our minds that we don't have to allow it. I disallow it. I am choosing to rise up. I'm going to break every chain and be free so that I can live, move, and have the type of being that I want to have. I want a different type of life. I want a different type of experience. And so I'm resisting the pull. I'm resisting the negative vibes because I I want better, period. I want better. The second key is this. We have to believe. We have to believe for better. We have to believe for more, for greater. 
We have to believe far beyond what we see and what we feel. I don't care how big it is. We have to believe that we can somehow overcome it. We have to believe that nothing is insurmountable for us. We have to believe that if one door shuts, another door is bound to open up any moment now. Even though the report might be bad, it might be actually jacked up, it may be just stomach turning, but we still, once we calm down, we have to believe that despite the bad report, despite the shortcoming, despite the situation, the circumstance that literally took our breath away, we have still got to believe that this ain't it. It's not over right here. The story is not going to end like this. And how do we do that? How do we keep our belief up? We have to talk to ourselves. We have to say to ourselves, the things that we need to hear to keep our steam up, to keep our esteem up, our confidence up. We have to talk to ourselves and we have to say the opposite of what the naysayers are saying. We have to say the opposite of what the adversity is saying. What those, those childhood adverse experiences, oh, they don't have anything good to say. That's why they're called adverse. We've got to tell ourselves a new narrative. The drama, we have to rewrite that. The trauma, we have to rise above, jump above that, leap over that and get a new mindset. We have to say it and say it and say it until we believe it, believe it, believe it. And we do this by talking to ourselves and saying the same thing that God is saying about us. The number three key is this, you've got to make a leap. You have to take a jump from the belief level all the way to the knowing level. It's like graduating from high school to college and going off to college or like graduating from university and then graduating from undergrad, you know, getting that master's degree, that it goes levels by levels. Belief is, you know, sometimes we say belief. I, I believe, I believe God. I believe it can turn around. I believe it can change. Yes, I believe it's going to happen for me. But sometimes there's something in the voice that says something a little contrary. Sometimes there's something in the heart that believes about 80, 90%, but then there's a wiggle room left. But if it doesn't happen, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't turn around, that's a defeatist mindset. When we move from believing and press that elevator button up to knowing there is no room, no wiggle room left for the defeatist mindset. There's no room left for if, maybe, possibly, I hope, I want it to, uh-uh. We're speaking 100% certainty. We are speaking with full confidence in what we say. It looks bad right now, but I know that it's bound to get better. Oh, it's a little tight right now, but I feel that ship coming in. Oh, I might be down right now, but you just hold your horses. And when you see me this time next month, not next year, when you see me this time next month, just give me about 30 days. You're going to see something different. Listen, when we know what we know, because we know who we belong to and we know who we are when we understand our identity, when we keep at the forefront of our minds that our thumbprint is unique to anybody else's on the planet. Our DNA may be similar, but it is not 100% 
carbon copy matching with anybody else's in the world. We're that unique. We're that special. When we understand our identity, our value, our worth, and we remember the promises that are hanging over our heads like a halo, oh, we can say with full assurance and certainty, I know that this thing is happening and I know that it's happening right now. No, I can't see it, but I know that it's taking place. No, I don't feel it, but I still know that it is bound to happen and it's going to be sooner versus later. We've got to know what we know. The fourth key is this, we've got to be able to see it. We've got to be able to see it until we see it so that, guess what? We can see it. We've got to be able to see it before we see it so we can see it. In other words, we've got to exercise the power of our imagination. We've got to be able to dream and dream big. We've got to know in our knower that if I can just see it, I can believe it. If I can just see it, I can become it. If I can just see it, I can grab hold to it. I heard a quote from one of my mentors that says this, if you can see it in your hand, in your mind, then you can hold it in your hand. Let me clear that up. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. You got to be able to see it. That's how you obtain it. That's how you tap into it. That's how you speak it and draw it like a magnet to your life. You've got to be able to see it. But what if you can't see it? I heard that. Somebody's wondering, but 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 my, my vision is so cloudy. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm discombobulated. Things have gotten pretty convoluted. What if I can't see it? What do I do then? This is what you do. If you can't see it right now, you need to back up and start those steps one through three all over again. You've got to resist and disallow the adversity, the untruths, the lies, the negative vibes. You've got to disallow them into your headspace, into your mindset. You've got to take off a defeatist mindset by sheer will and want to. You've got to take it off and you've got to consciously and concertedly make the choice and decision. You know what? I'm better than this. I can do better than this. I can have more than I have right now. I can expand my range wider than what it currently is. My influence and my impact can be so much greater if I just get my mind right. If I just stay strong and, and focused, I can, if I just concentrate, if I just believe, okay, we're navigating back again through those steps. If you can just believe that you deserve it, that you're wonderful, that you're worthy, that you're valuable, no matter what you might have experienced. And if you can understand that what you have experienced is not you. It's what happened, but it's not who you are. You're wonderful. You're awesome. You're amazing. You're fantastic. You're bound to be successful, but you've got to get rid of, ditch that defeatist mindset, okay? And of course, as we already mentioned, once you get to the belief level, then you want to make sure that you're not just saying, I believe, because it's the right thing to say, because it's a good thing to say, because it is, you know, the popular thing to say. When you know on the inside, you don't really believe that. 
You believe it for other people, but you don't 100% believe it for yourself or for your life. If that be the case, then what you have to do is you have to, as we said earlier, you have to put a pin in it, baby. You have to, you have to pull the stop, the stopper up and just put everything on pause. You have to get still and check in with yourself. Ask yourself some very important questions. Do I like who I am? And if you don't, then you have to change it. Do I like where I am? And if you don't, then you have to change it. Do I like what I'm doing in this place where I am? If the answer is no, 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 and heck no, then you have to begin working on a different plan, working to get on a different trajectory. And it is very much possible. You've got to know that you belong in the place that you want to get to. If you're, if you're qualified to get there and you do your due diligence, if you keep your words coming out right, speak like, speak like, speak it, speak it, speak it until you see it, see it, see it. That's where we are right now at key number four. You've got to see it. How can you speak it? Oh gosh, if you don't see it in your mindset, that's vision. When I say see it, I'm not talking about through your progressive bifocals. I'm talking about see it in your mindset. See it burning and blazing in your heart. I'm talking about see it being birthed out of your spirit, knowing that you're bound for greatness, knowing that you have within you everything that you need to produce, to manifest, to evolve, to become, to shift, to pivot, to move from one level to another dimension in the direction that you desire to go. When you can see this thing, you see it in your dreams at night. You see it in waking visions during the day. You're supposed to be at your desk working, but you're distracted because you're seeing where you want to be. You're seeing who you want to become. You're seeing yourself totally transformed and you're trying to figure out a tangible plan in order to help you get there, okay? And that's where we go now to slide number five. It says here, go get it. After you resist, after you believe, after you see, you got to go get it. Yes, the defeatist mindset by this stage, by this key, it has to be out of here. Because you cannot move forward and go get what you want if you're stuck in the past. See, life is too short to be stuck in the past. It's too short to continue to cry over spilled milk day after day, month after month, and then year after year after year after year. No, we've got to rise up out of anything and everything that has tried to shackle us down that has tried to confuse us, that has tried to hinder us, tried to limit us. No, 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 no limitations allowed. We disallow it, okay? We resist limitations and we take a stand for what we want. And that is what we speak. That is what we see. And that is what we go after. You gotta go get it. Oprah has a saying that says, turn your wounds into wisdom. Everybody, or at least the majority of people, I believe, have experienced some type of woundedness in their lives. Adverse childhood experiences are real. Drama is real. Trauma is real. Situations circumstances, obstacles, roadblocks, you name it, most people have experienced them 
at some point in time. But we cannot continue to allow the bleeding to go unchecked. We've got to get whatever assistance we need, whether that means giving the application to ourselves or going to an expert so that they can better assist us. One way or the other, we've got to mentally, emotionally, psychologically, we've got to physiologically, we've got to turn the wounds into wisdom nuggets that we can grow on, chew on, that will help us be strengthened by so that we can in turn reach a hand out and pull somebody else through the through. Reach a hand down and pull somebody up who has fallen in the hole in the sidewalk. We've got to be willing to let our wing down so that somebody else can get lifted up. That's what we do. When we come out of a defeatist mindset, and we get to this point where we are operating according to faith in action, not only do we believe, but we see this thing. Oh, I see the colors. I see the location. I see the corner office. I see the plate on the wall. I see the license plate in the rear view. I see the babies. I see the spouse. I see the business. Oh my goodness, I see the acquisition, I see the merger, I see all these things that I have been dreaming of. And I am determined to break every chain, to resist everything that tries to stand in my way. I am rising up from here and I'm going to go get my stuff. I'm not only going to get my own stuff, but I'm also going to get the stuff that belongs to my children and to my children's children. What about you? Are you going to rise up with the understanding that this is so much bigger than you? There's legacy that's at stake. There's perpetual blessing that is at stake. Many other women will not ever rise up until you rise up. They will never come to center stage and let the spotlight shine on them until they see you do it. They're looking for an example and tag, you're it. You're it. So I'm admonishing you to rise to the occasion. Rise to the occasion. Go ahead and be great because somebody else needs to see what great looks like. Go ahead and, and do some miraculous things because somebody else is waiting to see exactly what a miracle looks like. And not only is someone else depending on you to be the role model, the role model to be the trailblazer that they need, they are also depending sometimes for your shoulders to be the literal steps that their feet can land on and help them get lifted up over the wall of adversity, lifted up over the wall of drama, over the wall of trauma. They're depending on you to help them burst through the glass ceiling and get to the next dimension. They're depending on you. So, I need for you to be to get very, very committed. I need for you to get a fresh determination, a fresh tenacity. I need for you to be willing to ditch the defeatist mindset. Shake it off, step out of it, break free from it. Take out the scissors and cut the cord. Delete the phone number. Block the number. Get you a new group. Get you a new tribe. You might need to get you a new route home. You might need a new neighborhood. You might need to change 
corporations, whatever you need to do to help you ditch a defeatist mindset. That's to simply make a trade. Trade in limited thinking for elevated thinking. Trade in low-level living for moving on up that hill level of living. Trade in a woe is me spirit for a spirit that says, I just simply not only believe in possibilities, but I know that they exist. And I don't just know that it's possible for Oprah or it's possible for the, the, the person across town or it's possible for the person who's already at the VP status and has the corner office. You got to know that it is possible for you, no matter. I want to pause here. No matter what it might look like or feel like, it's still possible. And you've got to know it in your knower so that you can go get it. You've got to go after it. You can't be afraid of change. You cannot be afraid of leaving a comfort zone. You've got to rise up and face every giant. Look the giant in the eyeballs and say to the giant out of your mouth, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Giants, come down. That's what you have to do. You got to talk to yourself. You got to, you, you, you have to remind yourself every time a reminder is needed. When those negative thoughts like darts shoot at your mind, you at your thoughts, you've got to say something out of your mouth to counteract the defeatist mindset. The negativity says you ain't gonna do nothing. You need to be saying out of a victorious mindset, oh, I can do all things. The defeatist mindset comes to you and says, it'll never change. The victor in you needs to be saying, I decree and declare that it is changing and it is changing for me right now. The defeatist mindset says, oh, it Listen, you just talking smack. You need to be saying out of your mouth, let every word that comes out of my mouth be established and let it take place now. You need to counteract every negative syllable that adversity sends to your ears. You need to resist it. You don't have to receive everything you see. You don't have to receive everything that you hear. Turn your wounds into wisdom. I know it was a big L, but did you learn from it? If you did, shake the dust off and move on. Let the wound close up. Let it heal over. Put a bit of methylated on it and keep it moving. Yes. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Do you see the necessity of ditching, letting go of, getting rid of, taking out the trash of negative, low, stinking thinking that does not serve you well? I want you to know that there's a brand new you who is waiting in the wings. There's a brand new you that's stuck in a cocoon, waiting for the time when you decide that you're ready to show up in your own life. There's a brand new you standing right behind the curtain, waiting to hear the, 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 the snap waiting to hear the symbol, waiting to hear the gesture that says, now's the time. Come from behind that curtain. Come from out of the shadows. Stop playing small. 
Go get your stuff. Don't you know who you are? Don't you know the stock that you come from? Don't you know your value? Don't you understand your true worth? Can't you see that you're gifted and you're talented, you're skilled? Don't you know that you're able? Do you not understand and perceive the greatness that is all over you, shining on you like sunshine on a cloudy day? Listen. I need for you to want to be that brand new you. I need for you to want to become that brand new you who is healed from past wounds that you have now turned into jewels and nuggets. I need for you to want to be delivered from everything that was painful to you in the past, even if that was yesterday. And I'm not being trite about it. Healing is a process. Deliverance is a process. The only thing that I mean is I want you to be open for the healing, open for the deliverance. Let it begin so that you can go through the five steps and land both feet on the ground on key number five that says, go get it. I need for you to go get you. Did you hear that? I need for you to go get you. Go get your identity back. Uncover it. Rediscover it. Come out of that imposter syndrome that has been faking and pretending to be somebody else. The real you. The brand new you, guess what? She's good enough. She's perfect. Yeah. She, she fits the bill. You should try her out sometimes. Is that scary? Is that a scary thought? Is your heart beating rather fast right now? at the thought of breaking loose, breaking free from all of that defeatist mindset and going through all of the proper and necessary channels so that you can go get the brand new you. All of your stuff is waiting for you to arrive. All of your blessings are just waiting for you to crack the surface. All of the, the promises that are assigned to you, guess what? They're waiting on you, sis. They're waiting for your transformation. They're waiting for you to get empowered by ditching a defeatist mindset. Yes, they are. And the question that I want to know at this moment is, do you like who you see when you look in the mirror? By now, we've gone through the five keys to ditching a defeatist mindset. We understand the need to resist and disallow lies that have been told about us, about who we are and who we're not. We have understood the need to believe by talking to ourselves, speaking it, speaking it, speaking it until it takes root. It takes root and becomes real in us. And then we have understood the key number three, the need to take a leap and a jump from belief, which is one level and it's a good level, but we want to close up the gap and make sure there's no wiggle room for any unbelief. We want to get to the knowing dimension. We want to get to the knowing level where we are with absolute 100% unapologetic certainty. I am she. It is happening and it is happening for me, to me, in me, all around me, 
on behalf of me, in spite of me, despite what I have experienced, all of the goodness that is assigned to me, it is happening to me and is taking place right now. You got to see yourself looking back at yourself in the mirror and you're smiling at yourself. You know why? Because you have ditched the defeatist mentality. You have ditched the defeatist mindset. You have broken free from everything that had you chained up and bound up and tied up, tucked away, hiding in the shadows. You have ditched all of that and you have decided, you have made the choice. You know what? I'm all right. I'm pretty good. In fact, I think I love me. That's where we want to get to. To the place where you stand center stage. You tell the world, here I am. You may as well get used to me because now I know that I not only am worthy, but I deserve it. More than that, I belong here. The place that I'm trying to get to, that I'm working towards, I belong in that place. And that is where I'm going to be. There is a brand new, unstoppable you that is just in the wings, kind of maxing and relaxing, laid back, watching everything unfold and just kind of glancing at the watch every now and then. I wonder how many more minutes it will be before she comes through the doorway. Come here, you. Come here, you unstoppable you. You brand new unstoppable you who has ditched the default mindset. Come here, you. I am Coach Jackie Denise. I appreciate you for going through the five keys of ditching a defeatist mindset workshop with me. I would love for you to take a picture right now so that you can get my contact information and you can follow up with me. You can contact me. We can dialogue together. We can work together. Whatever needs to happen, I'm here for it, okay? I believe in you and I want you to get everything that belongs to you. Don't leave anything on the table due to a defeatist mindset. Wash your hands of it, okay? Wash your hands of a defeatist mindset. It no longer lives here. It cannot trespass here. It cannot come back in here and try to take up residence because it has been evicted. It has been locked out, padlocked, and it cannot receive a new access code to come back in and confuse, stir up, rile up, block, stop, hold up, hinder anything because I'm up now. You got to say to yourself every single day, I'm up now. I'm on my feet. I'm moving higher. I'm moving forward. No, no backstepping. No, no shirking away from the great that I am. I'm going all the way. I want you to just become her. You are her. You are her. Now become her. Become fully empowered. Become fully transformed. Because you have done it. You have taken on my personal mantra, which says, do it, do it, done. I'm Coach Jackie Denise, and it's been my pleasure to spend this time with you. I'll see you the next go around. Take care.